Hi, Miranda. How are you? It's great having you today. And thank you for this time. Hi, great. Thank you. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Well, congratulations on the clearing. You have managed to do such an amazing work from what I got the chance to watch yesterday. I want to know, how was it working on this character? Intense, you know? I mean, like, it's when you come to a role like this as an actor, you know, there's so much that, you know, you need to be to be that kind of um, charismatic, magnetic character and yet be, you know, um, kind of quite evil at times so it was a it was a, a big construction like it was a, a lot went into making this character from the look to the way that she manipulates people it was yeah it was like a, a big role to take on do you somehow feel identify with her i wouldn't say i identify with her no but i i felt like i got inside her and sort of felt like i knew what she was aiming for and i think you know i think she really believes a lot of the things she's she's telling people i didn't feel like she was selling something she didn't believe in i think she really thought that she had all the answers and do you think that uh this type of shows and series can be the start maybe of something in terms of like um awareness or informing the audience about these issues? I definitely think that, you know, people are really fascinated by cults. I, I know I am. And particularly at the moment, there's a lot of documentaries about various cults. And I think it's it's great to understand the psychology of it and how it works, how people get you in and, and promise you and a lot of things and seem to see you and understand you but you know how easy it is to kind of be brainwashed away from your family and friends and then how devastating the effects of these kind of groups can be and i think we're kind of in a time where we're very vulnerable to it a lot of people feel very isolated and don't have a sense of community and so these these kind of leaders you know seem to be able to you know um, solve all these problems for people, but they can't really. Were you able to meet or to talk with someone who has been a victim of one of those like cult science? No, I've read books. Like there's a very good book by a woman called Jane Stork called Breaking the Spell about her time in the Rajneesh cult, the Bhagwan. And my aunt was in that cult in the 80s, but you know, I have never spoken to her much about that experience. But um, so I, I've sort of done a lot of research, but no, I haven't spoken to someone directly about being in it. And what about working with your sister? I mean, that must be, you know, working with the family, like in this project. Yeah, that was like so great. And it was great to have a piece like this where we had so much to get into together you know like there, were, there was such a lot of material to work with i guess it does have like a special meaning right being directed by your sister gracie yeah definitely and we'd never gotten the chance to work together before so it was so nice and we you know spent a lot of weekends catching up and she'd be talking about what she how she wanted to shoot it and the shots she was thinking and what she wanted to get across and uh, it was you know, it was a real shorthand between us in that way, which was so nice. I imagine that your daughter must be your number one fan. I suppose that when she watched The Lord of the Rings, uh, she must have been like maybe fascinated to see her mother. But children, usually they say, you know, they're like the most honest, uh, let's say critics. So was there any special moment, memory maybe regarding your work in which Darcy left you like speechless? You know, my daughter's never seen Lord of the Rings. I, no way. I, purposely, I don't believe it. No, no, no she's never seen it. No, I purposely didn't show her as, Why? as a kid. Well, because I want her to relate to me as a mother, not as an actress. And one time when I was quite young, I was working in, um, uh, when she was quite young, I was working in um, Brazil on a film. And she, I'd been watching some dailies that they had sent me and it was about my birthday party and how no one came to my birthday party. And I went to have a shower and she was probably about eight or nine and unbeknownst to me, she watched it. I came out and she was bawling and saying, nobody went to your birthday party. So, but like to me, it was like, oh, it's, it's hard for her to separate between, you know, what's happening to the character and what's happening to me. So I've, Probably the first thing that she really watched I was in was um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina because it was more in 
her kind of age group at that time. I feel like, oh, that's a little more appropriate than some of the other stuff I've done. She's now 18. And and she has never even now like got the chance to watch Lord of the Rings. I can no, believe it, no. honestly. No, she's never seen it. Was that your favorite character to play maybe? It's definitely in my top five, like absolutely. But there's probably about, you know, five characters that have really stayed with me and were like really extraordinary experiences. And that was definitely one of them. It was an amazing. Is it true that you once actually hurt an actor in the leg with your sword? It wasn't an actor, it was actually a stunt guy um, on our stunt team. And we were doing a big um, stunt sequence in the Glittering Caves, a huge, like, long fight sequence. And he had an orc costume on, and with the, like, prosthetic padding that he had, I stabbed him amongst all the action, and he never told me at the time. He didn't tell me until, like, the rap party I found out. But he was worried that I would stop fighting so hard if I knew that I'd actually stabbed him, that I would be, be afraid to like go for it. So um, yeah, the New Zealand guys, are, they're very tough. They were tough guys, those stunt guys. They're fantastic. Um, yeah, so yes, it's true, I did. It's been 21 years, right? Since the premiere yeah. of Lord of the Rings and now you're gonna be back. How does it feel to be in those shoes again and meeting back with this character that was like so special for you and for everyone? Yeah, that was a really unique opportunity actually to, I mean, th that is going to be an animation um, and it's a, it's a story from, from later on, um, the telling of it. So I'm actually narrating in that, I'm narrating a section of it. And so it's all look mainly voice, but it was, it was really interesting to go back to. Uh, when we recorded the first bit of it, I'd had COVID uh, just like the few days before. My voice was super husky. So so we had to keep doing things again and again to try and stop my voice being so husky. But I've got more recording coming up soon and um, hopefully won't have COVID again when I'm doing it. Thank you for this time, Miranda. And congratulations hey, once again on your job with the clearing. And we have something in common. We just love the Wizard of Oz. And I know that you're like a huge fan of the Wizard of Oz, right? I am. I am a huge fan of the Wizard of Oz. I love that movie. Me too as well. Thank you so much. And thank and, you. And thank you for sharing this time with me. Thank you, Miranda. Cheers.